Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, today for this session, Creating Faculty Student Partnerships Using the UN SDGs and Open Pedagogy. I'm Dr. Michael Mills from Montgomery College, and I'm excited to be joined by colleagues from Montgomery College, in, including the, the moderator for this session, Samantha Venerusa. So uh, it, it's like giving a um, presentation uh, during professional week for us. Um, I'd like to, to have our, our group introduce themselves. And uh, first, let me turn it to Shinta Hernandez. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Hi, everybody. I am Shinta Hernandez from Montgomery College. I'm the Department Chair of Sociology, Anthropology, and Criminal Justice. Thanks, Shinta. Uh, we're also joined by several faculty members who have been uh, participants in this fellowship. Um, Rebecca, you want to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm Rebecca Razavi, and um, I am the director of a program at Montgomery College called the Southern Management Leadership Program, which is a, a scholarship and mentoring program for students in their second year at the school. Um, and um, happy to be here. Thanks, Rebecca. Is that? Hey everyone, I'm Zev Kassin. I'm a professor of anthropology at Montgomery College um, and also at American University. Um, and uh, uh, I taught a course called Human Evolution and Archaeology, which is what this, this um, presentation was about. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Zev. Uh, the beauty of a virtual conference is that we get to invite students to attend and uh, participate with us in an opportunity that they may not are not otherwise get because of the, the travel. And I'm really excited to be joined by two outstanding students. Um, Jalissa, you wanna say hello? Yes, hi everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, my name is Jalissa Mohano and I'm a government politics student at the University of Maryland and a former MC alumni. Thanks Jalissa and Parveen. Hello everyone, my name is Parveen and I'm an interior design student. I'm so happy and excited to be here. Thank you. And before we get started, I would like to begin by acknowledging the Piscataway people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we reside in Maryland. Uh, but I'd also like for you to do more in your presentations than just the, the land acknowledgements that, that are so pre prevalent today. I encourage you to find out about the traditional custodians of the land on which you reside uh, so that you can speak um, more eloquently uh, about their inhabitants. Uh, our, our program focuses on open pedagogy, but it, it started with our OER work in focusing on cost savings. And um, the, the work that we've done at Montgomery College over the years since we've been tracking this has resulted in almost $8 million. The, the number on the, the slide is uh, should be 7.9 million at this point. Um, and thanks to an Achieving the Dream grant that Samantha was, was in fact engaged in, uh, we were able to, to create a general studies online degree, uh, Z degree, and that also helped force us to start tracking our courses. Um, and so as a result of this tracking, we've been able to identify these, these cost savings, but we've quickly realized that it was more than, than just saving students money. I mean, that, that was great. We, we really acknowledge that we wanted to provide students with an opportunity to save money and continue their education. But from a faculty standpoint, an administrative standpoint, it was about student learning and, and student success. And so we've, while at the same time we've been tracking the cost savings, we've also been able to track the success in our Z courses and compare those to the non-Z courses and break that down by ethnicity and by race, and, um, by gender. And what we have found is that students are doing as well, if not better in the Z courses um, as they do in the, the non-Z courses. And then we've, we've taken it just one step further and, and focused on social justice. And Shinta and I had the pleasure of sitting in a presentation at Open Ed in Anaheim a few years ago. And it was a presentation that Cable Green was uh, giving on the SDGs. And, and we left there and wondered how could we marry this concept of the sustainable development goals 
through the United Nations and open pedagogy. And so with a, a little brainstorming between ourselves and, and with some colleagues, we came up with this faculty fellowship that is designed to make students agents of change in their, their own community. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that process. I do wanna encourage you as, as we go along, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. and We will either answer them in the chat or at the end of the session. So this fellowship that, that we offered uh, starts in March of every year where we have a, a call for applications. And the teams that we put together are interdisciplinary, and when we first started, intercampus. We have three campuses at Montgomery College. And when we first started, we wanted to pair faculty outside of their discipline and outside of their, their campus. We really wanted to take them out of their comfort zone. And so we created a, a summer institute in which the faculty would get together in teams and learn about open pedagogy learn about the sustainable development goals and marry the two by creating renewable assignments. Those assignments that David Wiley said have sustainability or have a um, continuity for students. Assignments that mean something, they don't have a shelf life. And I think we've all had those assignments where you're, you're given a paper to write and the minute that class is over, that paper and the thoughts of that paper go with you. So as we've expanded the program, and Shinta will talk a little bit about this shortly, we've brought in some other institutional partners and the teams are still interdisciplinary, but now they're interinstitutional. So we have teams, faculty working with members, faculty of other institutions. Uh, so it may be that a Montgomery College faculty is working with someone in Canada or on the West Coast. And as they go through the Summer Institute, they're developing these renewable assignments that are used in, the fall class, in their fall classes. And as I mentioned, students become agents of change in their own communities. It creates an engagement level for the students that they may not have otherwise had. Uh, as we've gone through four years of this program now, we have had students tell us that they are provided assignments and learning opportunities that they won't soon forget. And Jalissa and Parveen will talk about their experiences shortly. The other part of the, the process that is important is this faculty re reflection piece. Faculty looking at what worked and what didn't work and then making changes as they continue these assignments in subsequent semesters. Uh, it isn't, this program isn't designed for faculty to develop their assignments, use them in one semester. We really encourage them to continue this process in multiple semesters. And uh, Rebecca and Zeb, I think, will speak to that as, as we uh, get into the panel presentation part of of the uh, discussion. And then finally, in February of each year, we provide students and faculty opportunities to partner together to showcase what they, they've learned. So the, the faculty member will talk about the assignment, the student will demonstrate the output of that assignment. And, and they're just fascinating reflections of, of the teaching and learning that goes on in, in any given semester. And with that, let me uh, ask Shinta to talk about our most current cohort. Absolutely, thank you, Mike. So I'm happy to introduce to you our institutional partners for this cohort by way of their logos. So of course there's Montgomery College there. And that, so that was the first year, it was just us. And then the following year, KPU, Kwantlen Polytechnic University in Canada joined us and they continue to join us this year. Maricopa Community Colleges joined us that following year and they continue as a partner. And then we've added these for this year, um, the Community College of Baltimore County, CCBC in Maryland, Pima Community College in Arizona, Langara College in Canada and Thompson Rivers University also in Canada. 
And so we are excited about the, the contributions that are being made across North America in this fellowship. And in fact, we have a press book toolkit that we will share with you in the chat at some point today. And really this is an opportunity to take a look at what others have done in the past and um, adapt and adopt as you see fit for your own purposes. It's almost like a recipe book to, to get a sense of how we've done this fellowship and how you can contribute to the world of open education. Um, and of course, if any of you are interested, we can talk about uh, what an official partnership might look like later on. So I'd like to share with you um, the, the growth of the fellowship presented on the next slide as a table. And so what you'll see momentarily. I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank go. you, Mike. All right, so what you'll see here is over the, the course of four summers or four years, you can see the growth of the number of fellows that we've had uh, over time. And so we're of course, especially proud at, at, at this um, increase. And we can't wait to see what summer 2022 will look like. And then of course, um, as, as Mike pointed out, our fa faculty are paired in, in teams that are interdisciplinary and interinstitutional. Um, and you can see the, again, the, the seven institutional partners that we have here. Uh, what's very uh, interesting, a data piece that I'd like to point out is the number of disciplines that are, that are covered or represented in this fellowship. It has grown from just 11 to 12 disciplines in the very beginning to now 26 disciplines. So we're seeing more and more um, fields that we didn't see in the past. And we, we are so excited to see how, how those faculty and those, and those academic disciplines can contribute to this fellowship. Um, more courses, of course, uh, in which these renewable assignments are being deployed, uh, 29 different courses as opposed to 16 when we first just started, so a great growth in that. Um, the number of students have also increased. I will point out, though, that when you see summer 2021 and 970 students, please note that that actually does not include all of our students just yet. We're still in the midst of collecting the data. Um, many of our faculty fellows are teaching late start accelerated courses. And so those courses begin in about a couple of weeks. So those, of course, we don't have the, the data for the number of students just yet. So we will continue updating this to reflect the accurate number of students. And then as Mike pointed out, when he showed you the learning process or the professional development process, we don't know yet how many students will be involved in our February showcase, but you can see again, um, you know, it's a very selective process, of course. So we, we get students who are, are who want to be a part of that, who want to, to partner with their faculty and, and, and be able to highlight what they have done through this fellowship. And so we continue to see interest in that space. All right. And we, we are also very humbled and honored at the recognition on the next slide that we received last year by Open Education Global. Uh, it is the Open Pedagogy Award for Excellence uh, last year. So really this award is kudos to the faculty and the students who were involved in this work, um, particularly those who started with us in the beginning, walked um, on, on a journey with us that was a little bit unknown, and then those of the faculties and students who continue to walk with us on this journey and just do amazing things, as you will see with these two um, pairs of panelists that we will talk to in, in just a second. So. Uh, when you get a chance, as Mike pointed out, please take a look at our website that is written down there to get a better sense of uh, the different things that the different student projects that have been done over the last uh, four years. So now I would like to turn us to the panel discussion itself. This is the most exciting part of our of our presentation today. And I'd like to first start with Professor Rebecca Razavi and her student Julissa Mahano. So Rebecca, can you tell us briefly, what was your renewable assignment for this particular fellowship and what came out of that? Sure, I would love to. Thanks, Chenta. Um, well, as I mentioned when I was introducing myself, I run a program that develops students' leadership capabilities, but it's based around two courses in entrepreneurship. 
Um, and I was really excited to be part of this project because we focus a lot in our program on um, something called social entrepreneurship, which aligns very nicely with the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Another kind of term that we, we bandy about is corporate social responsibility because that's sort of at a corporate level what businesses are doing to help um, promote the, the goals of the United Nations. Um, that, uh, and Jalissa, this might be new for you too because it is a pretty new term that term is being um, uh, kind of put, put to the side. And the new term is environmental, social, and governance, which are the three areas that businesses are now being held more accountable for in terms of what they do to um, provide social and environmental justice um, to help to contribute to the goals like those of the United Nations. So that's a theme that we have sort of in our program, particularly in our fall course. Um, and, uh, and through this project, it's been a matter of, we have one final project, which Jalissa is gonna to talk to you a little bit more about, but it's actually, it's important to understand that it's part of a whole semester. So we do some reading around social entrepreneurship and corporate social responsibility and this new term, environmental, social and governance. And, um, and then we actually have speakers who come in who are working with companies to help them become more socially and environmentally responsible. Um, and, and have online discussion. So it extends over the course of the semester. Um, at, uh, at, at the point where our, this particular project comes in, they've, they've had that experience. And, and then I've asked them to create an infographic about a company that they're interested in learning more about. So um, that's what you can see on your screen there it is uh, Jalissa's project. Each of the students chose a business and they looked to see what that business was doing um, to uh, help support the uh, UN SDGs. Um, and then the, the last piece of it that I just, I, I think is, is probably as renewable or as expandable to other, other disciplines as anything, is that this becomes part of a, um, a digital badge that students can learn. So by going through all of these experiences, they can earn a badge, um, a change maker digital badge that, uh, that the school provides to them after they have completed all these things and can show that they've done that. Jalissa was the very first to earn this badge, so I'm so pleased that she's here with us today. Um, and that's uh, and so that's that's kind of a big picture of our project. Thank you, Rebecca. And before I get to Jalissa, I'm interested. So when when you became a part of this fellowship, how did creating these renewable assignments impact your pedagogical outlook? Oh, that's so that's so so great. So in some ways it aligned with my pedagogical outlook already, which was that it's really important for students to have opportunities to be creative mm -hmm. and um, and to also be uh, exploring things that are outside the, the world of academia and you know kind of the academic literature and, and those those things. So it really did align with with you know what I, I think is really important and I've thought for a long time is important. Um, the new piece of it for me was like engaging students in technology. So they used a program called Canva, which is a free tool that, uh, that students can use. And they can use it for lots of things going forward anytime they have to do flyers and marketing materials. So it gave them an opportunity to, to kind of test the waters with, with this tool. And they came up with things really, you know, that are beautiful and creative and, um, and were helped by the tool. So that was, that was part of what was new to me was, was engaging students with that technology. And just lastly, did you find that students were generally receptive to the idea, hesitant? That's a, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I did not realize until Jalissa and I were speaking about this later that there was some hesitancy. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we just throw these assignments out and they come back with something, but we don't know what they're, you know, how they, they approached it. So realizing that, yes, there was some hesitancy because it's a new, um, it's a new way of doing things that you, you know, you're not writing a paper, you're actually trying to create mm -hmm. something that looks nice and is concise and has all these images and all this, these kinds of things to it. So what I've done since then, you were talking earlier about how, um, I think Mike was talking about how, you know, we continue to improve our, our, our assignments based on understanding some of that hesitancy. I'm now um, doing more in terms of doing like live demonstrations of how to use this technology in class. We did that. I'm so fortunate that we've had one semester where students have turned in assignments so I can share examples with them. Um, so, and, and they asked for that and, you know, they were there. I could say, yeah, here's Jalissa's assignment. You know, this gives you an idea of, and here's some others to give you an idea of what's, what's available to you. Um, and uh, the last thing that I've sort of changed 
a little bit. Actually, this isn't about being resistant or hesitant, but it's actually it's more in terms of my my new understanding of how technology can help our students. So this semester, we're also going to be creating something with another app. It's called Book Creator. If you aren't familiar with it, it's a really interesting application where you can um, embed uh, all kinds of audio and vid video and things into a, a, a virtual book or a digital book. And we'll be able to take all of the infographics that the students have put together individually and put them together as a, as a whole class assignment. So I'm really excited about that as something new as well. Wonderful, Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing your perspective on this. And, and I'm really pleased to, to hear about the continued professional development that you're engaging in for yourself, that even though the fellowship is over, you are using some of the tools, strategies, knowledge, resources that you learn from the fellowship and um, figuring out uh, different strategies and such to, to continue your, um, your assignments. Thank you for yeah. that. All right, Jalissa, I'm going to ask you a few questions. So when these assignments were first announced in Professor Razavi's class, what was your thoughts? What was your reaction? Um, thank you for that question. And it was really interesting to hear um, every all the new things that have come around after this assignment. But when this assignment was first announced, I was really excited to like do some research on the goals and missions of the companies, um, just because I really care deeply about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And I also care about like what corporations and companies are doing to reach those goals, um, because as a consumer, that is what matters to me. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous at first when we, when we were introduced to this assignment because I had never created anything on Canva, um, which is the platform that we use to create the infographic. And I thought that I needed more skills. I thought I needed to be kind of some like um, graphic designer to be able to use this, but it was very user friendly because um, Canva actually has um, infographics already kind of pre-made for you and you just put in your information that you need. So this infographic um, template that I used actually was already made um, like sectioned already. And I just added my pictures and my text and all that. So it was very nice and easy to use. Thank you, I appreciate that. Now, you mentioned being new to Canva. So how else was this assignment or this fellowship experience different from your past learning experiences? Um, yes, thank you for that question as well. Um, this was definitely different from my past learning experiences because I was so used to you know, writing an essay to get my point across, but then this was definitely different because I had to think strategically on how I'm, what kind of information am I gonna put on this one page infographic to get my point across, to have my professor realize that like I am understanding the material. Um, so it was, it, all, it definitely made me think a little bit more, but in a good way, like it tapped into my creativity, which I don't get to be creative when I'm writing an essay. That's like a different kind of mindset that you have to be in. So I really enjoyed that. And I really appreciate your saying that because um, I can se sense the passion uh, that is that is in you as you talk about your experience and the creativity and the flexibility that you were given to really shine through an assignment like this. Thank you, Jalissa, for sharing. I'm going to now turn to our second pair of panelists here. So we have Professor Zev Kossin with his student, Parveen Hussein. Zev, would you mind telling us a bit about your project and your experience in the fellowship? Sure, thank you. Um, so I, I uh, integrated this project into a course called Human Evolution in Archaeology, which is really a course about human origins and, and the, the story of the, the um, six, eight million year journey of, of humans and our hominin ancestors. Um, and so what I did, I was paired with a couple of faculty partners from Kwantlen Polytechnic University um, who were experts in sustainable horticulture. And so we came up with this idea to create an ethnobotany. Um, so the idea was to use, to, to combine our two fields of anthropology and horticulture um, and think about uh, sort of in two pieces, think about um, the problem of our food systems at a global level um, and how we can increase the sustainability of, um, of our environment and, and our food production. Um, so we, we did this in two pieces. Um, the first piece, and this was back when, when classes were still in person, um, you can see there on the slide on the bottom, sort of in the middle, there's a couple of students who are there with their cell phones. 
Um, and the idea was to do an archaeological survey. Um, but instead of looking for archaeological remains, we were actually just identifying um, so-called weed species. So you can see pictures there taking photographs and they're using the app called iNaturalist um, to record, to take a picture of the weeds and then um, upload them into the app. And then with that, the students from uh, my partner's class could identify those as well as the public. Um, and then using that information, the students had to do two things, uh, two, uh, sort of two part ethnobotany. And the first was to research one of those weed species and, um, and to see if there were other sorts of medicinal or edible properties of that so-called weed species. Um, and therefore, um, understand how those plants came to be considered weeds, or how they came to be considered something that we just need to eradicate, <laughs> um, instead of, for example, eating or using as medicine. Um, and so that was uh, important to, to think about new sort of sustainable uses of plants that really are all around us and why we consider them weeds. Uh, and then the second part of the ethnobotany was where I asked students to think of a plant that had special meaning to them in their lives. And this could be literally any, any plant. It could be something with an individual connection, with a family connection, cultural connection, anything. Um, and to do the same thing, to create an ethnobotany uh, where they research its, its, um, its origins, its botanical origins, how it got to wherever it was, um, uh, whether it's something that they could, um, you know, they could submit a recipe for. Um, and just to tell that story of what the meaningful connection is to them in their lives. So the idea was to think about this long, millions of years long journey um, of the relationship of humans to our environments in different ways. Um, and I would just say that the, the assignment, especially the second part, became something that, that could be really easily transferred to the online format, to online learning. And that's where um, it was in that format that Parveen was part of this, um, uh, this project. Thank you, Zev. I appreciate your talking about the evolution of the project, particularly the evolution in which um, your pedagogical may have shifted from that face-to-face -face environment to this online environment. Um, how else did being a part of this fellowship or creating this renewable assignment change your teaching? Yeah, well, I mean, looking back, this was, I did this really in my first year as a, as a college professor. <laughs> um, so, uh, so everything that I got from it, I mean, it, it was formative to, to the way that I teach now. Um, in the, of thinking about myself less as an instructor or a teacher and more as, you know, a, a, someone who facilitates not just student learning, but also student teaching that I've, I've learned as much from students as I'm sure they've, they've gained from me. Um, so it's completely changed it. And, and also thinking about ways of doing this as, as uh, what some call culturally sustaining pedagogies, right? Or, um, you know, doing... Uh, assignments that that actually affirm who students are um, that that meets them where they are and as they are um, as they come into the classroom um, so it's completely changed the the, the dynamic and and how i how i approach my my teaching and to to be able to do that toward a, a particular aim toward uh social justice or toward some of these critical crises that we're that we're experiencing now is just uh is a game changer yeah yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing um, the significance of this of this fellowship and particularly your assignments um, in both the short term and the long term. I appreciate that. So I'm going to turn this over to, to your student, Parveen. Hello. Hello. So when the assignment was first announced by Professor Kassin, what was your thought? What was your reaction? So firstly, I would like to thank my professor for bringing up such an intriguing and uh, engaging class. I truly enjoyed your class. So when the ethnobotany project was introduced, uh, it really sounded exciting to me. Uh, we had to choose a plan that uh, that had a close or uh, personal meaning to us, and I've always had obsession for roses. And I was able to express my thoughts and understanding in a creative manner. And then the project included various uh, segments such as the characteristics, uh, taxonomic classification and the cultural history, which has definitely deepened my knowledge. Um, the most unique part of the project was to come up with uh, two recipes and I totally love the project. Thank you. 
Thank you. And I, I love that you have a love for roses because I do too. So it's nice to see how um, that love can transform into something as, as meaningful as this. Oh, Barbie, just one more question for you. So were you um, comfortable with this assignment when you first got it? Did it take some getting used to? How was this different from the past learning experience of yours? Definitely, I was I was really comfortable. Uh, I was able to work in a calm environment. So, like Julissa said, we've we've always uh, done essays and we've always uh, do exams a lot of the times. Uh, and especially as an interior design student, I always deal with designs. And so I was like able to incorporate, incorporate like I, I took the pictures on my own, uh, mm -hmm. like the roses pictures. Uh, and then I designed my own slides and then the fonts. So it was really different. It was a very, uh, I must say it was a really good experience. I loved it. That is wonderful. And in fact, actually your response just now is a great segue to my last question for our two students on the panel. So Parveen, I'll just start with you since um, you're already unmuted. You mentioned your major and how this assignment lends itself to your, your degree program, your major. What other impact that this renewable have assignment have on your, your academic or your personal or your professional growth or your ability to, to make change in your communities? So to a greater degree, uh, what I understood from the project was uh, that we need to protect our plant species as they are very precious to our world. And we need to spread awareness to our communities uh, in terms of preserving our plants plant species. And as an interior design student, as an individual, it is uh, our responsibility to, my responsibility to make the world a better place. And thank you, Professor, for teaching uh, me, I mean, us about it. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Parveen, for sharing that with us. So, Jalissa, I'm going to ask you the same question. What impact did this renewal assignment have on your, your academic, your personal, your professional growth, or your ability to make change in the communities? Um, thank you for that um, question. Um, so the impact that it had on me was that I, it definitely improved my research and my presentation skills. <laughs> uh, I was able, I, I only had one page essentially to create the most impactful like assignment. And so I had to fulfill the requirements of the assignment. I had to show how these companies mission align with the UN SDGs all in one page. So it definitely helped me improve my research and presentation skills. And I also feel like this assignment prepared me professionally because as an like aspiring social entrepreneur and policymaker, I learned that successful presentations are impactful when they're concise and clear. So that's what this helped me realize. And between the two of you, Jalissa and Parveen, you shared with us so many of the outcomes that we hope to, to have students reach by the end of their fellowship experience with the faculty fellows, right? It's the um, making the world a better place. It's, it's increasing awareness about how we can make a difference. It's also the conference presentation skills. It's the communication skills. It's the leadership skills. It's all of that, all holistically wrapped up in one fellowship. So thank you so much to the two of you for sharing. All four of you are so inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, uh, Rebecca and Zeb, as a faculty fellow. And then a special thank you to Jalissa and Parveen, students who we have um, just relied on and just um, admire so much for your great work. And so now I turn this over back to Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Jensen. And, and thank you, Rebecca, Zeb. Parveen and Julissa. Um, I do have one, one final question for uh, Parveen and Julissa. We have a lot of faculty, a lot of administrators who are, are sitting in on, on this session and who will listen to the recording. What words of advice could you give them as they're looking to diversify their, their assignments, the types of assignments that uh, they provide their students? Uh, Julissa? Um, I would definitely encourage um, teachers and professors to use an assignment like this um, and also to encourage students to look more into the UN SDGs and um, how businesses can easily incorporate this into their mission. Um, because for me, like I was pretty ignorant to all the S UN SDGs except for the ones I really cared about um, because I did a lot of research on those, but this assignment allowed me to expose myself to the ones I hadn't 
done research on. So I definitely um, encourage people to become um, aware of these issues. Wonderful, thank you. Parvi? Um, I would say the same, like as a student, all these projects, like it, it just, uh, I had to like, I sat down and thought for a moment uh, and then it really had an impact on me. So like every student like uh, who, who goes through his, uh, through this kind of project school will definitely have an impact. Wonderful, thank you. And um, for those who, who are attending, if you have questions about uh, the fellowship and you're interested in, in learning more, feel free to, to reach out to Shinter or I. We're, we're always looking for institutional partners. Uh, we're having conversations now with a, a community college in um, Illinois and also a four-year institution in Costa Rica about joining the, the partnership. And, and I think it's just exciting opportunities to think about faculty pairing with faculty from different schools, different different countries, different types of institution as, as we move this, um, this work forward. So uh, thank you. And we'll, uh, we have a few minutes, I think, Samantha, for, for some questions. There's any any questions in the, the chat? Okay, Samantha just texted me and her screen is frozen. So uh, she's also here. having uh, technical <laughs> difficulties and, and Sybil um, posted a question. Do any of the teachers house these projects publicly somewhere? Um, and Shinta, you wanna talk a little bit about that, uh, the press book and the, the website? Absolutely. So the website that the Montgomery College website that was on the slide has um, a wide range of both the renewable assignments from previous years as well as student projects. It doesn't have all of them, but for, for the website, we selected some to put on there. Um, all the other institutional partners have their own respective websites that they share or that they, they have their assignments as well. Um, the press book that I mentioned earlier, that is like our recipe book, that is an ongoing recipe book because as the years go on, we will continue to put renewable assignments and student projects in there as well. Um, Montgomery College has the um, Maryland Open Source Textbook Commons Hub, which is another online repository where we house our um, assignments. So there are many, many different places where you can find these. And I'm sure if you talk to the other six institutional partners, they might have additional ones um, as well. James, uh, yeah. James asked if there were opportunities to join the initiative and, and absolutely, we're always looking for institutional partners. And back, sorry about that. So we have one last minute, any final comments or questions and anybody, um, any of the panelists who want to stick around or any of the participants who want to stick around afterwards, you're welcome to use the room. Um, we'll just shut down the recording and, uh, and otherwise. Okay, shutting down the recording.